हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू सारुचि क्लास एस सो लेट्स कंटिन्यू आवर क्लास सेलेवन इंट्रोडक्शन टू इंडियन कल्चर चैप्टर नंबर टू दैट इज आर्ट ऑफ द इंडस वैली सो इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन द लोकेशन ऑफ दिस साइट्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन दिस मैप सो लेट्स अगेन हैव अ लुक एट इट सो दीज आर द साइट्स हियर इज द इंडस रिवर एंड दीज आर द प्लेसेस और दीज आर द साइट्स दैट वर दिस प्लेस बेसिकली वी कॉल्ड इट एज इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन uh because these cities are settled on the bank of the river indus and that's it so let's uh, start reading this chapter so the arts of the indus valley civilization emerged during the second half of the 3rd millennium bc and the forms of art found from various sites of the civilization include sculpture seals pottery gold jewelry here are cut of figures etc so here you will see uh, here is the seal um, of uh, terracotta and the artist of that time surely had fine artistic sensibilities and vivid imagination so their delineation of human and animal figures was highly realistic in nature since the anatomical details included in them was unique and in the case of terracotta art the modeling of animal figures was done in an extremely careful manner now the two major sites of the indus valley civilization along the indus river the city of cities of harappa in the north and the mohenjo daro in the south showcase one of the earliest examples of civic planning so other markers were houses markets storage facilities offices public baths etc arranged in a grid like pattern remember grid like pattern so there was also a highly developed drainage system while harappa and mohenjo daro are situated in pakistan the important sites excavated in india are lothal and dhulavira in gujarat remember these are the important sites like lothal and dhulavira and these were excavated in india in gujarat now rakhi grahi in the haryana then ropar in punjab kalibangan and balathal in rajasthan remember these name lothal dhulavira in gujarat then rakhi grahi in the haryana ropar in punjab kalibangan and balathal in rajasthan now statues uh, whether in stone bronze or terracotta found in the harappan sites are not abundant but refined so here you will see a bust of bearded priest so let's read something about the stone statues so the stone statuaries are found at harappa and mohenjo daro are excellent example of handling three dimensional volumes in stones are two male figures one is torso in the red sand stones and the other is the bearded man in the steatite which are extensively discussed so here you will see this uh, figure of the bearded man and the another figure i'll show it in the next pages so the figure of the bearded man interpreted as a priest is draped in the shawl coming under the right arm here you will see coming under the right arm covering the left shoulder and this shawl is decorated with the trifoil pattern so here you will see this trifoliate patterns and the eyes of uh, this figure are little elongated here you will see these eyes are elongated and half closed as in the meditative concentration and the nose is well formed and of medium size so the mouth of is is of average size with a close cut mustache and a short beard with curls and the ear resemble double shields with a hole in the uh middle the hair is parted in the mere here you can see the hair is parted in the middle and the plain woven fillet is passed around the head so here you will see this uh what we can say a woven fillet which is passed around the head and the armlet here you will see the armlet is worn on the right hand and the holes around the neck suggest um, the necklace now uh bronze casting so uh, 
techniques of the same nature are practiced even now in many parts of india having a continuous tradition so let's discuss something about the bronze casting now the art of bronze casting was practiced on a wide scale by the harappans and their bronze statue were made using the lost wax techniques in which the wax figures were first covered with a coating of clay and allowed to dry they were then the wax was heated and the molten wax uh, was drained out of drained out through a tiny hole made in the clay cover and the hollow mold thus created was filled with the molten metal which took the original shape of the object and once the metal cooled the clay cover was completely removed and then in the uh, this is the technique uh, to uh, to you know cast uh, bronze figures and uh, this is called as lost wax technique so in the bronze we find humans as well as the animal figures and the best example of former being the statue of girl popularly called type popularly titled dancing girl amongst animal figures in the bronze the buffalo with the uplifted head back and the sweeping horns and the goat are are of artistic merit now bronze casting was popular at all major centers of the indus valley civilization and the copper dogs and bird of lothal and bronze figure of a bull from kalibangan are in no way inferior to the human figures of copper bronze from harappa and mohenjo daro now the late harappan and the chalcolithic sites like dhaimabad in the maharashtra yielded exa- excellent examples of the metal cast sculptures and they mainly consist of human and the animal figures it shows how the tradition of figure sculpture continued down the ages so here you will see the figures of mother goddess which is made up in the terracotta and here is the another terracotta figure in here you will see the uh, you can see the hairstyle and the necklace of this so uh, we can see the face and here is the neck and so this is about it so uh, let's discuss something about the terracotta so the indus valley people made terracotta images also but compared to the stone and the bronze statues the terracotta representations of the human form are crude in the indus valley and they are more realistic in gujarat sites and kalibangan now the most important among the indus figurines are those representing the mother goddesses and in terracotta we also find a few figurines of the bearded males with coiled hairs their posture rigidly upright legs slightly apart and the arms parallel to the sides of the body now the repetitions of this figure in in the exactly the same position would suggest that he was a deity a terracotta mask of horn deity has also been found and the toy carts with the wheels whistles rattles birds and animals games vans and desks were also rendered in terracotta here is the another uh, figures of terracotta now something about the seals so archaeologists have discovered thousands of seals usually made of steatites and occasionally of agate chert copper fines and terracotta with the beautiful figures of animals such as unicorn bull rhinoceros tigers elephant bison goat buffalo etc and the realistic rendering of these animals in various modes is remarkable and the purpose of producing seals was mainly commercial it appears that the seals were also used as amulets carried on the persons of their owners perhaps as modern day identity cards remember these amulets were just similar to the modern day identity card and the standard harappan seal was a square plate 2 by 2 square inches usually made from the soft river stone steatites hmm re- remember this steatite is a soft river stone and every seal is engraved in a pictographic script which is yet to be deciphered Un- unfortunately the indus uh, script haven't been deciphered yet now some seals have also been found in the gold and the ivory and they all bear a great variety of motifs most often of animals including those of bull with or without the hump 
Now the elephant, tiger, goat and also monsters. Sometimes trees or human figures were also depicted and the most remarkable seal is the one depicted with a figure in the uh, center and the animals around. So now this seal is generally identified as a Pashupati seal by some scholars whereas some identi identify it as a female deity. Now this here you will see is the Pashupati seal or some scholar may identify it as a female deity. So this seal depicts a human figure seated across legs and an elephant and a tiger are depicted to the right side. Here you will see elephant and the tiger are depicted to the, here is the elephant and the uh, tiger are depicted on the right side of the seated figure while on the left side a rhinosaur and the buffalo here you will see the rhinosaurs and here you will see the buffalo are seen so in addition to these animals two antelopes are shown below the seeds now seals such as these date from between 2500 and 1500 bce and were found in the considerable numbers inside such as ancient city of mohenjadaro in the in this valley now, figures and animals are carved in the intact leo on their surfaces and square or rectangular copper tablets with uh, an animal or a human figure on one side and the inscri an inscription on the other or an inscription on both the sides have also been found. Now the figures and signs are carefully cut with a barin and these copper tablets appears to have been amulets unlike inscriptions on seals which vary in each case inscriptions on the copper tablet seems to be associated with the animals portrayed on them next we are going to uh, talk something about the pottery so a large quantity of pottery excavated from the sites enable us to understand the gradual evolution of various designs motifs as employed in different shapes and styles and the indus valley pottery consists uh, chiefly of very fine wheel uh, made wares uh, very few being handmade and plain pottery is more common than painted wares remember plain pottery was more common than painted wares and the plain pottery is generally of red clay remember this plain pottery was generally of red clay with or without a fine red or gray slip it includes knobbed ware ornamented with a row of knobs and the black painted ware has a fine coating of red slip on which a geometric and animal designs are executed in the glossy black paint now uh, polychrome pottery is uh, rare remember polychrome pottery polychrome means the many uh, colored or multicolored you can say so polychrome pottery is rare and mainly comprises uh, small vases decorated with geometric patterns in the red, black and green, rarely white and yellow. So uh, incised wear in all is also rare and the incised decoration was confined to the bases of the pans always inside to the dishes of offering stands. Perforated pottery includes a large hole at bottom and small holes all over the wall and was probably used for straining liquor. Pottery for household purposes is found in as many shapes and sizes as could be conceived of for daily practical use. A straight and angular shape are an exception and while graceful curves are the rules, miniature vessels most less than half an inch is height are particularly so marvelously crafted as to evoke the admirations. Hmm, so this was about the vessels and pottery so next we are uh, before moving forward let's have a look at this uh, images so here you will see a perforated pot this must be used for liquor and here you will see images of image of different types of pottery here you will see the decorated um, uh, we can say decorated portion of this pottery now something about the beads and the ornaments now the harappan men and women decorated themselves with a large variety of ornaments produced from every conceivable material ranging from precious metals 
and the gemstones to bone and the baked clay while necklaces fillets armlets and finger rings were commonly worn by both sexes women wore girdles earrings and anklets hoards of jewelry found at mohenjo-daro and lothal include necklaces of gold and three precious stones copper bracelets and beads then gold earrings and head ornaments fine pendants and buttons and beads of seedites and gemstones so all ornaments are well crafted it may be noted that cementry has been found at farmana in haryana where dead bodies were buried with ornaments now the bead industry seems to have been well developed as evident from the factories discovered at chanudaro and lothal and beads were made of cornelian amethyst jasper crystal quartz seedite turquoise and lapis lazuli okay okay so remember uh, these factories were discovered at chanudaro and lothal factories of beads was discovered at chanudaro and lothal and these beads were made of different stones like cornelian amethyst jasper crystal quartz seedite turquoise lapis lazuli etc so metals like copper bronze and gold and steel fines and terracotta or burnt clay were also used for manufacturing beads and the beads are in varying shapes size disc shape cylindrical spherical barrel shaped segmented so some beads were made of two or more stones cemented together and some of stones with the gold covers now some were decorated by the incising or the paintings and some had designs etched onto them great technical skills has been displayed in the manufacture of these beads now the harappan people also made brilliantly naturalistic models of animals especially monkeys and squirrels used as a pin heads and the beads remember monkeys and the squirrels like uh, models of these monkeys and the squirrels used as a pin heads and the beads now it is evident from the discovery of large number of spindles and spindle works in the houses of indus uh, valley that spinning of the cotton and wool was very common so before moving forward let's have a look at this beautiful uh, jewelry as uh, the bead work and the jewelry items during the indus valley uh, period so here you will see uh, these different types of beads uh, this must be a necklace this must be an armament and these different uh, beads which were made up of different uh, materials hmm. so uh, the fact that both the rich and the poor practiced spinning is indicated by the finds of the world made of expensive fines as also of the cheap pottery and the shells men and the women wore two separate pieces of attire similar to the dhoti and the shawl and the shawl covered the left shoulder passing below the right shoulder remember so it means that these people were aware of use of cotton now from archaeological finds it appears that the people of the indus valley were conscious of fashion and different hairstyle were in the vogue and wearing of a beard was popular among all cinnabar was used as a cosmetic remember cinnabar was used as a cosmetic and face paint lipstick perlim that is the eyeliner were also known to you to them and many stone structural remains are also found at dolavira which show how the indus valley people used stone in the construction now the artists and the craftsmen of the indus valley civilization were extremely skilled in the variety of crafts and the metal casting stone carving making paintings pottery and making terracotta images using simplified motifs of animals plants and the birds so here you will see some of the terracotta toys so with this we have come to an end of this chapter so do subscribe to our channel for more such lectures and do hit the like button and do comment below do share with uh, do share this with your friends and do comment below so that i'll come to know um, if uh, for, for some uh, improvement if you want uh, some improvement from me please uh, do comment below and if you want me to make more such videos do do comment below and do let me know uh, thank you thanks for watching